Hello again everybody and a very warm welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the new Just Flight 146 professional update coming very soon to Microsoft Flight Simulator. A huge enhancement to the 146 that they've had in the sim now for over a year. Really, really good old school uh, aeroplane with a variety of historical routes and uh, we've got our own here, Osprey Airways, as you can see here at Birmingham Airport, our own livery uh, for our virtual airline. So hit like, hit subscribe, we're going to dive into all of the new features of this massive update uh, releasing very soon. Within this massive update, we've got the long-awaited UNS-1, which is going to transform our flying experience in the aeroplane and makes it really good for those of us who like to fly the aeroplane on VATSIM, for example, along with a whole host of other features and updates within the aircraft, They're both textures and system-wise. We're going to dive into a lot of those throughout this video, so uh, share your thoughts down in the comments section below. Part of the update brings us a new cabin environment with upgraded and improved textures and the no smoking sign seatbelt signs replicate that of the switches in the flight deck. We dive into the flight deck everything is pretty much as we remember with a little bit more of a polish on the uh, textures certainly if you look at the seat area here this is uh, vastly improved and really really nice. They've also done a lot of work in the UNS-1, we'll touch upon it today, it's so vast, um, the, the, the kind of depth uh, of the UNS-1 that we, we will spend hours talking about it, so we're going to brush upon some of the features of that throughout the video today, and uh, I'll share my thoughts throughout with a uh, little flight. The EFB has also had a little bit of a uh, tweak, so if we were to load our OFP from Simbrief here for this little rock flight that we're going to do today with our routing. We've got um, some improvements to the METAR displays and we've got our OFP output here as well which we can uh, grab the slider and scroll up and down with. The click spot down here is the same, this uh, mag variation card near the pedal adjusters you can hide it if you wish and if you like to fly instead of the captain's seat over on the first officer's seat when you toggle the view across you will find now that EFB will also head across there for you and you'll have access to that in that seat which is really neat Navigraph charts, uh, we've seen all of that before and uh, in the aircraft page now we're going to notice a whole host of new features so in the cog on the top left uh, we get a couple of extra features like GSX handling and FMS options we can go to modern or classic so you can choose uh, which one you prefer uh, for the purpose of today we'll stick with classic because that is the uh, the kind of main way in which all of this is displayed the airplane is going to be supplied with a massive new manual detailing all of these new functions. It's going to have a UNS-1 manual and an EFB manual as well. And Just Flight have been putting a load of videos on their channel covering various new features. The cog button here, the spanner, the wrench, uh, introduces new failure options. So you can have probability set to real and uh, you can, it, almost like service-based failures really. Uh, and if you want to, you can change the probability and you can also uh, fail the AC pump or you can arm the failures at some point around 60 minutes uh, or however you want really you can set all of those times to simulate some emergencies should you wish and then the fix all button there fixes all of them obviously but in multiple pages of uh, failures here three pages currently which is really really cool to see I'm sure lots of you will enjoy that feature and uh, the next one is a pushback function so you can connect the tug you don't need GSX it will use the sims own tug features and you can control the pushback using those arrows there directly in the EFB which is really nice you can now also use this checklist function so you can hide or uh, toggle it on if you wish and you can click through normal checklists and have a little look at various uh, prompts 
and down the bottom here you can see rotate CW or ACW for anti-clockwise and you can also um, kind of move the pages next as well by moving the sort of position around you can see it highlights a different option so far left is previous and we've also got next it will toggle across and uh, you can then hide them as well potentially and in the center it will take you back to the index page turning our attention to the UNS1 um, initially you want to align your IRS it's more of a cross-check function it should be accurate for you and you'll notice now we have loads of different options all the way across this aeroplane we've got the left select keys and the right select keys and then we've got the function keys outside of those uh, fuel, tune, uh, next and previous, power dim we can look at nav and all of this are in, basically placed inside the um, manual for you to read if you see a little M at the top you press menu it'll allow you to then enter the menu for that which is really good what you will find is uh, as you're programming the UNS1 you can go into select EGBB you type it in press enter it will give you the option uh, via the ICAO code uh, once you've added that in then you would need to manually start to add in a new waypoint the next waypoint after Birmingham initial entry is Lovham we press enter and uh, we can see that that's fine so we accept it if it's highlighted in a white box for example that's the prompt for you to select uh, or execute as we know in the Boeing for example the, the, the request and then we start to build the flight plan like so so the next one is selected is number three we want to put in the next waypoint of Nanty like so press enter that's good except and we just build the route um, until the point as we're at now we reach an airway and we need to think about airway insertion so from here we can press list we can select airways from Nanty and we want the Lima 8 for this little flight to Belfast City so we're going to um, select number one press enter and it goes into the airways from Nanty via Lima 8 and then gives us all of the waypoints along the routing and we find which one we want so in this case we want Taddle and we can either type in Taddle or we can press 8 and it'll automatically sort it for us and add in all of the waypoints between Nanty and Taddle same with UL8 which is the next waypoint again just press list airway from Taddle uh, we want the UL8 which is number 4 is the option so select 4 enter and then the next waypoint from there is Bilbo which is number 6 so 6 and enter it's actually quite a quick way of inserting your flight plan it doesn't seem to have a sim brief integration within this but um, just using the number selection here as you can see is very quick Tupum which is number one, one, enter and it builds, we're already uh, two pages in and nine legs in thanks to all these airways and then we've got Rempsey for the direct enter if there are duplicate waypoints it will give you the option of those and you just work out which is the closest and perhaps if you're using Simbrief if you look at the map it will give you your longitude latitude um, to work out if it's 54 degrees north or if it's 37 degrees north for example and you, you know where you are and which one then you need to select uh, if you're in any doubts Nineb accept and then list for the mic 148 so airway mic 48 the same goes for VORs for example as well so you can click VOR which is the RSK1 up here and it will give you various options uh, for those and you can see there and you just select the one you want but in this case we want uh, Mike 148 to Maggie so a very very simple way of adding in all of your flight plan and then towards the end EGAC for our destination Belfast City accept done so we press menu and we can go into departure we can select, uh, we want runway 15 for takeoff today, so again we go, uh, we can either go runway 1 
and it will automatically select option one which was runway one five and uh, we want the love and one yankee departure again you can use number four one yankee cross check it make sure it's correct happy days and there's our routing so we can look for any discontinuities but there aren't any and then uh, we know when we get to Belfast City um, it's a direct to onto the um, ILS runway 22 and because it's a nice short leg which are th these are fantastic at what we can do is uh, select menu arrive 22 runway number 2 no stars but then if we click RSK4 it will uh, select the approach and again we want number one which is ILS 22 transition number two from Maggie and it builds it all into our flight plan so now we've got six pages it's taken all of about four or five minutes approximately really nice with the boarding page if you're inputting a OFP it should give you a prompt um, to import from your Simbri flight plan you can also set them manually which is what I've done today and you can change your boarding speeds to instant 20 minutes 10 minutes 5 minutes or realistic uh, we'll go for instant today and if you're using the GSX toggle that we had a look at a moment ago in the settings it, it will sync this aircraft up with the um, with the GSX boarding process which is quite neat so we can press start boarding and then automatically when it's all done running the yellow hydraulics uh, lines active the stairs will retract at the end of boarding and then the doors will begin to close for us automatically which is nice toggles then other um, enunciators like the uh, crew announcements and it all starts to work away in the background rather nicely okay so we're on live weather live time here at Birmingham the weather in the UK is really poor at the moment and you can see a huge uh, band of rain starting to come in in the sim as well actually we're gonna push start and make our way towards Belfast where we can expect some fairly poor weather and uh, we'll chat a couple of times through the flight just to talk about some of the features in flight and how the UNS1 seems to work as well so for this we're going to toggle um, the pushback inside the EFB so you guys can see how all of that works. So at the moment we've uh, connected, we've begun to connect the tug, release the ground power and just before we push back what I want to show you guys is this uh, from the F-28 professional actually so we can toggle the PA, interphone the pilot, turn the emergency lighting on and up the top here we can turn some cabin music on which you can customize inside the folders and all of the instructions for that are in the manual as well you can skip some of the tracks as well through the different modes there if you want to and above the forward right door there are other toggleable options the lighting inside the toilets, ground service lights and you can see whether or not the no smoking seatbelt signs are on there for the crew which are quite cool you can turn the cabin lighting off if you want to manually turn it all back on again there they are so really nice to see a little bit of an animation and uh, simulation in the cabin environment as well really uh, anyway back to the business end Part brakes off and chocks are out away, and uh, all the beacon lights are on. Let's start our pushback, I think. So you can change the speed if you so wish. We'll start to turn the engines on.
So what I've done here isn't the neatest pushback. Uh, we're a little bit across the line here. So actually what we're going to do now is... Slow the tug, and we're going to begin a pull. Like so. And then we can turn the tug forward, uh, left or right as well if we wish to, just to customise our pushback and be a little bit more, um, a little bit neater. Look at that pressure, folks. 975 hectopascals, my goodness. Okay, and then we can cancel the pushback, put the part brake on, and the tug's going to release itself and move away. It was using the GSX uh, tug here, so that's why it's picked the wrong one really for this aircraft. But there's nothing really we can do about that, and it's certainly nothing um, that the aeroplane can deal with. Whilst we start engine 3, we can see here we've got um, various different modes on the Sperry console. So weather's one of those as well, which you can turn on. You can increase the range um, as well if you want to. Really nice to see heavy precipitation in red. Uh, yellow denotes average and light. So there's a lot of um, precipitation and um, horrible weather around us at the moment. We'll turn UNS2 on as well because they work independently of each other. And you can see here as we start engine 2, the startup sequence of the UNS1 going through its various tests and checks. So we're going to use LNAV and uh, speed modes for takeoff. We're going to arm the altitude as well. We can do that now with the flight directors on. Wait for engine one to fire up. Just bring some of the other generators and pumps online. And we'll get those uh, flaps set to 18 degrees. One of the cabin views that I've set here, custom. Look at that. On the other side of the aeroplane, there's one of the other wing views. And we can begin the little taxi out. I'll see you at the threshold. Lining up then. Ready for takeoff on runway 15. Got a 16 knot headwind and uh, now lots of rain coming in. As we were just mentioning before we started pushback, this huge band of rain moving in across the Midlands from the south. Uh, 14 knot crosswinds and 13 knot headwind of runway 22 and minimal VFR at Belfast when we arrive. So challenging conditions, decreasing visibility here as well actually, rather nasty looking weather coming in to Birmingham. So part break off, uh, TRS, TMS is set to take off 88% N1. Small engines, we'll just check the outputs, uh, we, don't know, we know what we're doing after take off as well, so initially flying runway heading up to 6,000 which is armed with a left turn uh, we'll, to let the LNAV sort itself out after takeoff. TMS sets takeoff. Speed alive both sides. That's because I forgot to do that earlier, so it's basically catching up with us. Rotate at 130 knots. V1. Rotate. V2. Positive way to climb gear on. So following the settings and the kind of uh, enunciations from the first officer, Speed come up. Mm 
an initial climb, go to TGT 820, LNAV. Set 200, speed mode. And the LNAV's got the turn, we're at Birmingham 23 with a left turn. We're going to turn off lights off. Let's see about signs. Engineer. Finished after takeoff checks. Maintain speed. And we're level here at 6,000. And airborne. So takeoff uh, actually felt really quite nice. Uh, smoother, more stable than the previous version. The, the dynamics and everything seemed really good actually. 16 knots. Headwind helping us, and uh, we're flying into the crosswind at Belfast to really test it, but felt very, very nice indeed. You can see there the weather radar picking up some horrendous weather around us at the moment. With that in mind, I'm going to put some of the icing conditions on. And we'll continue the climb up to 240 to get out of this cloud. Alt arm. Flaps are up. Get the aeroplane accelerating. Engage speed mode, back into the climb. And uh, we'll go up to 1013 for standard pressure. The sounds seem to me as if they've been slightly tweaked as well. I'm not sure if they have. We'll look at the massive changelog when it does arrive. But actually I feel like they've just been improved ever so slightly as well. Again, that more of a vibey kind of feel at this point in uh, the cabin here. Which, uh, as we discussed at the start, is wonderfully recreated actually and improved here. The textures and things, just a bit more polish on it. And a very realistic, nice look and feel to it as well. As we climb, VNAV will give you the option uh, of putting in a target vertical speed. So for this example, I've gone for just minus 2,000 foot per minute, 3.3 degree uh, descent angle. And it's telling us here with the calculation that we have 123 miles to top of descent to achieve 2,000 feet by our final approach into Belfast. So by looking at the METAR in the EFB we can see that at Belfast City the winds are 130 degrees at 10 knots but variable between 100 and 160 degrees. All the nines but light rain scattered cloud at 1,200 feet broken 
1,700 feet. Uh, temperature plus 7, dew point plus 5, QNH 9 or 6, 8 hectopascals, which is uh, some of the lowest pressure I've seen in a long time in the sim, actually, I think. That's wildly low, isn't it? So we can get a read on, on the weather and uh, what to expect. That variable wind could cause us problems on final. Uh, therefore, we instead of maybe adding five knots to our flight plan uh, or our approach speed, we might add ten knots instead. And if you want to use the top of descent calculator inside the EFB, you can do that as well. And it will give you a desired top of descent distance and a desired vertical speed to achieve uh, 3 degrees to 2000 from your current altitude. Want to go? There's the C chord. We'll hold, hide the EFB for now. And we'll level off at uh, flight level 240. And sort our speed out. Don't forget to change the TMS as well. So we'll have to go into climbing thrust at 820, uh, TGT through flight level 150, we up that to 840, and then cruise around 740 degrees ish. But that obviously might need to be changed. In flight, if you have a little look at your performance page, you can see um, the estimated time on route. The actual time of arrival that's predicted, 12.53 local time, overhead EGAC, it's going to give us changes of uh, fuel on board, our endurance, our range and all that sort of stuff, along with our uh, ground speed tailwind, uh, 23 knots which is helping us along today and the outside air temperature about minus 42. So it's worth having a really good look around that UNS-1, play with all the different features and functions and uh, learn it as best as you can. One thing to bear in mind is that UNS-1 is obviously going to make its way into the uh, Just Flight F-70 and F-100 package when that eventually arrives and the Avro RJ that they're working on as well. Uh, so really exciting to see this now finally highly anticipated, long waited for uh, in the sim in one of their products. One thing you can do as well is define a hold so if uh, you're on the VATSIM network and you think oh Crikey, we're flying into Maggie, we're in Belfast City and it's incredibly busy for whatever reason. Uh, what you can do is do a hold fix at Maggie, for example, here. So we go uh, 22 hold fix. And uh, it'll ask you then to input the relevant pieces of data. So inbound course, uh, in this case, would be, it needs to be th um, from 321, it needs to change to 253. And then uh, outbound would be 073 degrees. L for left, change that. And time one minute. And uh, when you're done and you've configured that, you can arm the hold. There's a second page for a second hold if you want to once you've armed this uh, but that's how you would input and change the functions of your uh, holds if required on VATSIM and it's a really good feature. One other thing that's quite cool uh, if you want to mount uh, various things for your flights so for example you've downloaded some charts and you want to use those up here there's a little document tray, if you click that it scoops a uh, chart out and you can flick through and you've got various things like approach speed summaries and uh, these are samples so effectively what you can do, if I just go back to the index here and go previous a few times, it says import your own documents here, you can drag and drop various PND, PNG images into the following file directories as you can see there images slash chart and images slash checklist in order to um, import some of those yourself. So, for example, uh, the Osprey Airways checklists, um, if we have some for the 146, you can import that directly into here and you can tag them to each um, relevant kind of section, which is really cool. And then when you're done, you can just stow it again 
away as we're about to head into this horrendous weather once more. The latest Metar now refreshed is a 10 knot crosswind and a 9 knot headwind but obviously those winds are, are quite variable. Uh, we're going to go for flat 30 landing 124 but we're going to add 10 so it's going to have us uh, come in at 134. And again there's no auto thrust in this just in case you uh, haven't seen it for a long time. This is all manual throttle control. Speed checked below 180, select flaps 24. So gear down, intercepted the localizer, fly slope armed, fly slopes armed, gear down and it's calling for the next stage of flaps, we're at 9 miles, about 24. Speed checked below 170, select flaps 30. Speed's good, flap 30, glide slope we captured. capture the glide slope, nose comes down to uh, follow the glide path just tickling the throttle accordingly as well. Set three. Established on the ILS. Okay, get down three green and 30, that's all set. Uh, missed approach brief, light signs, all set as required. Horrendous visibility, great fun. Rad out, we can see just below the altimeter there, 1600 feet above ground level. Four miles. Just keeping the power set as it is at the moment so we can maintain uh, 140 or so knots. We're only going to drop that down to 134. And with this, from uh, memory, it's been uh, about eight months since we last flew it. As we cross the threshold, we want to extend that speed break. And then as we touch down, it allows allow us to basically pop it out completely and get the lift spoilers up on the wings. Uh, there's no auto, uh, there's no reverse thrust. There's no auto brake. So it's all down to us to be technically accurate. 1000's coming up. Glide slope's looking good. The aeroplane's really quite stable actually in this. Uh, we've got 10 knot potential uh, sort of variable crosswinds. Getting buffeted about ever so slightly, but it seems quite smooth. just to turn the brightness up of those so you can see that a little bit better and we'll keep the autopilot in until minimums or near thereabouts maybe 500 feet AGL actually reducing to final approach speed now 134 is what we want it's a very hands-on aeroplane actually but this sector that I've done today um, I've been very impressed with some of the updates they've made. The last thing, of course, is touchdown, which I quite often struggled with. There's the new feature of Cat 2, little illumination there for the approach monitoring system. Getting thrown around. Autopilot disconnected. What's 100? Well, hey, over the land and all of a sudden minimums. the uh, wind's whipping through minimums. So continue, we are nice and stable, given the conditions. Speed's good, profile's good. Here we go. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Round idle. Yellow and green spoilers. Let the nose come down just gently. Eighty knots. Sixty knots. Well, I've got to say that landing experience is a huge improvement to the previous version. There's the touchdown, one point one eight G. Pretty tricky conditions, 160 foot per minute. Actually felt really quite nice. You'll notice that we've got the lift spoilers out as well. I was having a little fiddle with the controls actually just to see with the speed brake commands how it was all working. And there's the windsock. 
we just get a, alongside that a bit better and you'll see how we've just done with the conditions here at Belfast look at that absolutely massive improvements to the way this handles um, <laughs> very really impressive actually they've done such a great job with this hopefully you guys are all enjoying the video as well actually and noticing the, the, the differences um, in this latest version let's get her off the runway we're going to taxi in towards the gates uh, and shut her down what a fantastic little product Of course, uh, we're going to be streaming with this as well around the release of the update and uh, a couple of days or so afterwards perhaps just to tie in with it and offer a live experience for you guys in addition to this preview video which is a lot longer than expected but there's so many features that they've packed into this update to talk about it. not least that massive UNS1 uh, addition to the package. There's that cabin noise in the background, the music. Very faint, so you perhaps can't hear it in the video. So there you have it, folks. Lots of improvements. To the Just Flight 146. And that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this video showing you all of the new features to the 146 professional updates coming imminently for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Hit like, hit subscribe, share your thoughts down in the comments below. If you haven't purchased it yet already, then uh, I can highly recommend it anyway. It was a great aircraft before. It's even better now. And uh, I look forward to seeing what Just Flight creates in the near future with their other products. But as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in a live stream very soon. Take care.